Hi guys, uh, this is sort of the standard query we've been using for the last videos and here I'm going to introduce a new topic which is called aliasing. So what does that mean? Well, these fields are the fields uh, provided by open food data for diverse um, categories in the table. Now, some names I prefer I don't like. For instance, I prefer to use, instead of countries, I prefer to use the word nations. And I prefer here to show the word nations in my found set or in my, uh, you know, when I, when I output this table, instead of countries. How do I do that? Well, it's a very simple thing. It is as and then nations. And now if I run the query, uh, you should see instead of countries, you should see nations appearing here. And there we are. So let's say if you need to output a table but have the column names in a different language, you can use the word as. And we can try another one, for instance, as, you know, I don't like, I don't need the word um, energy, so I just call it kilocal, and without the 100 even, and if I run that query again, then I would have shortened that field to kilocalorie instead of uh, energy. And that's how you can, you know, uh, alias fields. Kilocalorie is not the real name of the field, it is this. That's why you still, in your where statement, even though I have aliased this field as nations, in my where statement, I still have to use the original name. Because you can see here, if I use nations and I run that, I'm going to get an error. And the error says, Column nations does not exist. Well, it doesn't. We're just aliasing it. So be careful when you alias that your where statement um, is consistent with the actual field names and not the aliases that you create. Right. So that's one thing. Now, where aliases will play a role, where we'll put it this way, where field name aliases will play a role if you wrap this query in another query. And this is another topic we're coming to, which is basically subqueries. When you have this query as a subquery for another query, then you access the fields through the aliases. So we're now in one query. In this original query, you use the uh, real field names. Whereas if you package that, fee that query into another query, where that query here acts as a subquery to another query, then you access these fields with the alias. What happens is why, why doesn't, why doesn't uh, SQL recognize the alias or Say, put it this way, why doesn't SQL recognize the new name of, um, of, of the column? Why do we still have to use the original name? Well, because one has to think in a process, and the process is like this. First, you get the selection, and then you get the filtering, and then as a last step, or maybe one of the last steps, you would then have the, um, the aliasing. So thus, when the filter is applied, Aliasing, aliasing has not yet taken place and that's why you'd have to uh, you know uh, use the original name whereas if if, if you package that uh, query inside another query then you use the aliases now apart from aliasing fields you can also alias the table and let's say i need to shorten that name the, la the name is too long i can call that table off data for instance I can call it whatever I want and that'll work so now if I need to access that table again um, all I gotta do is basically call OFF data you know again here here in contrast to uh, field names you can immediately use the alias name for the for for, uh, for the fields 
let me give an example. Let me let me comment this stuff out first of all, and I can basically call each field like this, and that's what I actually do when I write uh, real queries. I call the fields or professional queries. Put it this way: production queries. I call the fields by their table names. To, to identify from which table they come. Because in, in real world queries, and you're gonna see that later on, we're not gonna be just querying one table. We'll be querying multiple tables simultaneously. And to know where one field comes or where each field comes from, you use the table name dot uh, field name. Now, if I, if I run that, that should work. And it does. Now, if I alias the table, what happens here? Let's run it. And you see now uh, invalid, invalid reference. The table name is not valid anymore. Why? Because it's been alias. So thus, when you alias fields, do not use the alias name in the where statement. However, if you alias a table, you immediately use the alias name. And this, let me change that, OFF data. And same thing here. And now, if I run that, that should work. And there you go. And we got it. And you see, now we have a different table name. The table name is not so much obvious in this table, but you can see that the, the aliases are, are, are there. And like I said, one thing to remember, field aliases, cannot be using the where statement of that query where you've been doing the aliasing. However, table name, a, a table name aliases can be immediately used or should be immediately used in the filters because as you see, it won't work otherwise. And obviously you can alias all fields and uh, it is no same, same process as before. And uh, you know, you can call whatever you want, doesn't matter or let's call it prots and whatever, and carbs. And here you see, I forgot the word as, so don't forget the as, and then carbs, and let's run that. And you see, now I've just renamed a lot of columns, you know, the way I want them. And, um, and we can see then in, uh, in subsequent queries that we're going to be generating through the series that aliasing becomes here aliasing is a necessity is a, is a luxury you know i you know i'd like to rename the column okay good for me i just renamed it with s but later on when we do more complex queries you're going to see it's not a luxury but actually a necessity to alias your columns